Hi, and welcome to our program. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, a part of OU Health. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture with Path Presenter and the Digital Pathology, uh, or Digital, uh, Pathology Association. So our uh, program today uh, grows out of uh, a case that came up recently. Um, and as uh, sometimes is the case, the case the the uh, questions arise, and then you decide, well, maybe this would be something to talk about. So let me start with a slide here, uh, rather than the history. Uh, and I think you can see at low magnification that this is uh, a rather heterogeneous uh, tissue. Uh, we've got what looks like some fat, some cellular areas, some uh, more uh, pink areas, some pale blue areas here at low magnification other areas of fat. Uh, and so, you know, uh, this is kind of one of the, you know, classic uh, appearances for uh, several types of tumor uh, that have a heterogeneous uh, character. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, it was an endometrial tumor, uh, which had uh, quite evident uh, heterologous uh, differentiation. Uh, and so here's a one area that had a, a, a surprising uh, differentiation, these very large eosinophilic cells. And as we come in to uh, look at these, we'll notice that a number of them have sort of the eccentric uh, blob of eosinophilic cytoplasm. Sometimes you can see that it's a little bit kind of uh, ropey or corded um, and has, uh, you know, maybe some suggestion of uh, striations to it. Uh, in fact, on uh, immunohistochemical staining, this was skeletal muscle differentiation. Here we have areas of epithelial differentiation and, you know, very small tubular structures and so forth. Uh, but looking at this uh, elsewhere, we saw uh, here this blue tissue was uh, immature cartilage tissue, uh, which you can see here. Um, and then we have this cellular stroma and then in addition, uh, we also have uh, an area down here where it uh, begins to look uh, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, more muscular and so forth. Uh, I seem to recall there was a little bit of bone-like differentiation someplace or another. Um, but suffice it to say, uh, a malignant tumor with epithelial and very malignant uh, stromal elements uh, is uh, the uh, classic uh, def definition of um, a uh, carcinosarcoma, uh, which uh, in this uh, situation uh, would uh, certainly fit uh, the uh, localization and so forth of the tumor. So that brought up the question of, you know, what are these tumors that uh, produce so-called heterologous elements? And when I was in training, this was a kind of a big deal, very helpful diagnostically at times, uh, and actually figured into the classification. So by definition, heterologous elements are bone, cartilage, or skeletal muscle, or fat, or other tissues uh, that are present in an otherwise uh, epithelial tumor, breast cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer, uh, endometrial cancer, et cetera. Um, but really, I suppose by definition, it could be any tissue that's kind of unexpected or out of place. So <clears throat> epithelial-like elements in an otherwise stromal neoplasm, endometrial stromal sarcoma with sex cord elements or epithelial glandular elements could be considered in a purest sense uh, heterologous uh, elements. Um, and so uh, the uh, the next question would be kind of, what kind of tumors produce this? Uh, well, here's another example of uh, how this can be useful. So this was an ovarian tumor uh, in a fairly young woman with some elevated tumor markers. Um, and uh, you can see it has a variegated appearance. It has uh, some rounded blue areas. It has a lot of kind of uh, very vascular appearing uh, tissue here with a lot of uh, extravasated red cells and, and so forth. Uh, we see a few little pale uh, balls here like this with cyto sort of a foamy or uh, vaculated cytoplasm that uh, are a clue to the diagnosis. 
Uh, but really, in this case, uh, it was uh, finding these uh, other areas, uh, which I'll highlight over here, which so these nice broad straps or bands of uh, spindle-shaped cells uh, in and amid this uh, otherwise myxoid stroma. Uh, and as I looked at these cells, I thought, you know, these look a lot like there's uh, a good chance that they're muscle fibers, immature muscle cells. Uh, and so I hunted for a good long time to see if we could identify some cross striations, which I did find. Uh, but in this situation, of course, I can't demonstrate that quite as well because I can't get to the highest magnification uh, to allow you to see that easily here on the screen. Um, but this was very helpful because recognizing uh, the other morphology, the age group in this patient, the presence of heterologous elements in what otherwise appeared to be a, a stromal uh, type neoplasm with variegated uh, tubular and occasional uh, steroid-like cells uh, in the mix uh, persuaded me that this was likely a Sertoli Leidig tumor uh, with heterologous elements. Uh, and uh, that uh, indeed proved to be the case, which we'll, we'll show in a couple of uh, immunohistochemistries. Here was another area of the tumor, which was uh, uh, less obviously uh, Sertoli Leidig cell tumor and certainly didn't seem to have definite uh, heterologous elements, although it did have this very uh, vascularized appearance uh, of either very poorly formed tubules or uh, very uh, uh, active uh, vasculature uh, developing as part of the heterologous elements in this tumor. Uh, here you can see a little bit more dilated vascular spaces, uh, more conventional vessels here. Uh, and really, it took the uh, staining to kind of bring out some of the uh, 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 other components in this tumor, uh, although I think we could find a few areas where there seemed to be uh, vestigial tubules and, as I said, some uh, foamy cells that looked like they might be uh, steroid uh, uh, secreting lytic cells. So uh, what did we see? Well, here, of course, was the uh, confirmation that indeed we were dealing with uh, uh, muscle tissue. This is the myogenin stain uh, in that uh, first section, which shows you very nicely uh, the nuclear positivity indicating uh, myogenic differentiation. Here, another stain. I think this is uh, with a uh, uh, CD34. Uh, highlights the very vascular nature uh, of these areas here, staining virtually all of the cells uh, with this marker, um, uh, and not uh, particularly highlighting uh, other cells, although here we see uh, maybe a little accentuation of some of these uh, cells here, uh, which suggests uh, that this was uh, a uh, separate component. And so the variegated immunohistochemistry also is helpful in this situation. Here's the melon A stain, which again brings out these uh, small uh, clusters of lighting cells uh, in the background of uh, these other uh, tumor cells. Uh, and so that was, again, very helpful to see the differential staining in this particular case. So uh, in thinking in general about tumors which uh, may exhibit heterologous elements, uh, I've just illustrated two of the most common ones, certainly the most common in my practice, are carcinosarcomas uh, and the sertoli Leidig cell tumor. Uh, and usually uh, in the sertoli Leidig tumors, it's not necessarily the most well-differentiated ones that will have heterologous elements. It's the ones that look sarcomatous. Uh, that will oftentimes uh, have these, these features, such as the one we just looked at. Now, other uh, tumors of uh, biphasic nature, like adenosarcoma, can have uh, these elements. I've mentioned endometrial stromal sarcoma, which, in which case it would be the epithelial elements that would be kind of heterologous, but they can also have stromal elements that may be uh, heterologous, as can phylloides tumor, uh, perhaps a uh, morphologic uh, cousin to adenosarcoma. I was interested to discover in uh, reviewing this topic that a couple of other tumors in other locations uh, can also have uh, heterologous elements. Notably, malignant mesothelioma, some of the sarcomatoid variants there, uh, can have uh, 
a bone or other differentiation in them, uh, as can malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, um, and of course the, the triton tumors as well. Anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, I mentioned pancreatic carcinomas and others, uh, metaplastic breast carcinoma and so forth, uh, typically fall under other terms, but uh, from a definitional standpoint would also fit into the heterologous element uh, category. So let's just review a couple of other uh, of these sorts of lesions. Here's an example of an adenosarcoma that's fairly low grade, um, and uh, it didn't really have fully developed uh, uh, heterologous elements, but it did have these kind of uh, two-ton giant, giant cell type of uh, uh, component uh, in the stroma, uh, which I think uh, taken to an extreme could uh, either mimic or uh, masquerade as, or, or or actually develop into heterologous uh, elements. Um, here's a, another example of a, uh, a tumor with a very uh, pleomorphic uh, stroma uh, and more uh, adenomatous uh, type of uh, tissue. So an adenosarcoma with very cellular stroma. And this is actually a phylloides tumor from the breast uh, with this very atypical or sarcomatous uh, stroma. And as that sarcoma is the uh, element in the phyllodes tumors become, the malignant phyllodes tumors becomes more pronounced, uh, you have the potential to see uh, heterologous elements develop. Now this was another uh, uh, gynecologic tumor. Uh, and this one's a little bit more subtle. We can see here uh, that we have a carcinomatous element here, uh, sort of a serous uh, pattern carcinoma, which is perhaps the most frequent uh, epithelial component in these tumors. Uh, but in the uh, sarcomatous element, it's just a very undifferentiated high-grade sarcoma, um, very cellular, uh, purely spindle-shaped cells, and so forth. And we only see a few areas where it starts to loosen up a little bit and begin to develop a more mixoid uh, pattern of change. Uh, now, again, this did not have uh, widespread uh, heterologous elements. I think they were only present in one area, a little bit of uh, sort of mixoid and the uh, chondroid type of differentiation, which is starting to develop a little bit here. You can sort of see these, a few lacunae in a few areas here. So not fully developed, but uh, a little suggestion uh, of that pattern of differentiation. Um, uh, here's a, uh, another tumor, again, with, uh, you know, well-defined epithelial areas, very high grade, uh, some, maybe some, uh, uh, you know, kind of undifferentiated carcinoma almost. Um, and here's some glandular elements, maybe a few uh, uh, sort of rosette formations uh, in this lesion. Uh, here, you know, more sort of biphasic pattern of growth. Uh, but in this lesion, uh, we actually developed, uh, here you can see uh, the malignant, uh, either osteo or cartilaginous tissue, it's kind of not clear exactly what, uh, that would constitute a heterologous uh, element. Now, the, uh, um, this has been a long-term fascination. I remember as a resident uh, looking at uh, some of the uh, biphasic tumors in the bladder and going, wow, these are really interesting. And uh, looking at the, you know, neoplastic bone formation with the bladder and so forth, uh, and really being fascinated by what's going on. I think this reinforces the very uh, broad genetic diversity in these tumors uh, that can have uh, a variety of uh, paths of differentiation. Now, certainly there are underlying driver mutations uh, as well. And sometimes looking at a very diffuse tumor like this, you might uh, not be uh, inclined to think of it as a heterologous elements. But in fact, when you come down here, many of these cells are uh, these uh, myoid, pre myoid precursor type cells with eccentric nuclei, ropey cytoplasm, and so forth. Uh, and so this rhabdomyosarcomatous uh, component in this tumor, uh, you know, would be uh, compatible with a uh, carcinosarcoma in the right location. And this was, uh, as you can see, from a uh, smooth muscle-lined uh, uh, organ from the uh, um, uh, uterus. 
So uh, the fact that we don't have epithelial elements here doesn't mean this isn't a carcinosarcoma with heterologous elements. It just means that we, we may need to sample it more fully uh, to identify uh, those elements. And that underscores the fact that uh, the balance between epithelial and sarcomatous uh, features, uh, heterologous versus homologous, uh, can be uh, quite variable. Uh, this is almost entirely uh, rhabdomyosarcoma uh, with virtually no uh, epithelial component, uh, but uh, we saw other tumors where the, uh, the reverse was true, where it was mostly epithelial and only a small amount. So generally, the definition or the, the cutoff we use is about 10%, uh, which you know this tumor illustrates. Here we have um, you know, predominantly an endometrial uh, adenocarcinoma uh, with uh, you know nice open glands and and the stroma here does not look uh, particularly atypical. There is maybe a little bit of uh, increased cellularity to it, a little bit of atypia here. So you might begin to wonder about that. And I think it is always important in these uh, uh, tumors to uh, to question whether or not there is a carcinosarcomatous uh, component to it, uh, because especially on curetting samples that can be very subtle. Um, but uh, looking elsewhere, we see over here, uh, you know, a nice, uh, clearly sarcomatous uh, component um, uh, in this uh, particular area of it. Uh, and I don't remember what the uh, heterologous uh, component was. It was here. I think we have a little squamous there. Um, I think there may have been some bone in here at uh, one place or another. Um, that uh, meant got the, the nod for heterologous elements. Uh, and then uh, one last case here, uh, again, um, very cellular, uh, very pleomorphic. Uh, and here we can see just these occasional uh, cells with the uh, very uh, uh, eosinophilic, brightly eosinophilic granular uh, cytoplasm that uh, turn out to on immunostaining have uh, myogenic differentiation. Here you see some multinucleate variants of those. So mostly uh, kind of uh, highly cellular, high-grade sarcoma with occasionally uh, rhabdomyosarcomatous uh, elements. Another case here I think you can see, uh, even at low magnification, these pale areas, um, more mixoid appearance, um, almost uh, alveolar uh, type appearance. Uh, and then here we are again, you know, bright eosinophilic inclusions, rounded nuclei, uh, sort of rhabdoid type cells uh, that, and here are a few strap cells uh, even uh, in this uh, process uh, that were uh, rhabdomyosarcomatous uh, differentiation. Here's the carcinoma over here, uh, and here you can see the, uh, you know, the sarcomatous elements uh, around in the stroma here coincide nicely with this serous carcinoma uh, area uh, with a very high-grade epithelial nuclei and uh, p53 mutation in this case. So when do these make any sort of uh, difference in prognosis? I mean, it was long believed that these would be uh, more aggressive tumors. But it actually has been uh, found that, uh, you know, stage for stage, the presence or absence of heterologous tumors, heterologous elements, does not seem to make a difference for the uh, Sertoli Leydig tumors, the carcinosarcomas, or mesotheliomas with this tumor, uh, with this feature. Uh, now, I say this uh, with a caveat in that um, the presence of heterologous elements with Sertoli Leydig tumors really does kind of imply a higher grade uh, tumor, a uh, moderately to poorly differentiated Sertoli Leydig tumor, rather than uh, the uh, generally a little bit better behaved, well differentiated Sertoli Leydig tumors. Um, in Pelotes tumors, again, this is an indicator of uh, kind of advanced or higher grade differentiation and an indicator of sarcomatous overgrowth, which is a prognostic factor. Uh, so here on both sides, uh, phylloides tumor. Uh, and in adenosarcoma, again, the same story. 
that uh, the heterologous elements are a harbinger of a higher uh, grade uh, tumor and therefore potentially poorer prognosis. So I hope you uh, found that interesting. Uh, uh, we'll uh, keep your eyes open for these uh, lesions as they come to your uh, surgical pathology practice. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to comment or reach out to me. I always welcome those and comments or ideas uh, of topics or questions you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, welcome those and look forward to hearing from you. We appreciate your subscription to our channel. That's a great way to catch the future releases as we uh, put out new videos. And we hope that uh, you'll uh, like it so that other people can uh, get a chance to uh, hear uh, what's going on as well. Now I put these comments always at the end, and uh, I know that no, not everybody does that, uh, but uh, I will perhaps uh, add them at the beginning uh, now and then to uh, encourage uh, uh, the new viewers who don't make it all the way to the end sometimes to uh, likewise uh, uh, clue in for our uh, future releases. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me.